Hey you guys, I um, wanted to do a video today, kind of talking a little bit about something that's um, coming into the culture um, as kind of, it, it seems like it's just a fun little personality test, but it's it's actually, it's, it's deeply pagan and deeply um, rooted in Native American shamanism. And so I definitely need to expose it. Um, I don't even know where to start because it, it involves my actual testimony too. So um, I'll just try my best. But the scripture verse that is most convicting is from the book of Jeremiah. And it's Jeremiah 10 2. And it's warning God's people, um, which applies, which this is the argument people will say, well, that's, a, that's just a warning for the Jews. But um, no, it's, I mean, it's not guys like it applies to everybody. Like we're not supposed to learn the ways of the heathen and it, Jeremiah tend to learn not the ways of the heathen. So why would we ever want to learn their ways? You know what I mean? Especially when their ways are spiritual serving other gods, right? So we don't want to adopt the pagan practices. The book of Deuteronomy talks about that as well. Uh, he, the Lord warns about adopting the pagan practices when you go into their nations. Okay, so I'll put, I'll try to, I will, I will put the verse on the screen for that one. I just, I just know that one because the book of Deuteronomy, um, so many of us that Jesus saved from the new age, that was the book that we um, were heavily convicted about all the spiritism, the mediumship, the psychics, the witchcraft, everything. It's all in there. But I want to focus on this verse on Jeremiah because it really, um, to me, sums up everything perfectly. Like, don't learn, don't learn those ways of the pagan, of the heathen, pagan nations. Okay, so power animals, spirit animals, totem animals. You will probably see books or personality tests, which I didn't know they were doing until recently, um, and tarot decks, all with this this concept. Um, I think it has innocently snuck into even church culture under the idea that if you are praying for the Lord to confirm something and you see a bird or something like that, that that means that that is an answer to your prayer. The Lord's confirmed it. That is a new age belief that has snuck in um, this idea that if you see a cardinal, I, I met a chiropractor woman who was also a new ager and she said when she saw cardinals, she knew, she knew that God was talking to her. So, um, and she was, she was actually, um, Jewish, but like, but new agey, right? So she had, she, so I, again, I don't know where this belief came from, but it's just a belief that if you see a certain type of bird that you love, that that's God getting your attention. So that's a new age belief. And, um, I'm not saying that the Lord can't use any of his creation to get your attention. And I certainly know that when we come out of the new age, um, when Jesus saves us from the new age, sometimes there's some confusion with that because I, I had a whole chapter in my testimony that, um, I, I, I originally had it as a blog, but then, uh, but then, um, there was so much in it that was, I just needed to get out and it was witnessing to new agers at that time. So I did that for like a year and then now I'm warning the church, but, um, I had a blog up for a while, but anyway, there was a blog post I did. It's no longer available, but it was this idea that, um, it was a couple months after I was saved. I was really confused about, um, birds because birds were my spirit animal. Um, sorry for my eye. It, I have having some eye problems with my glasses. They're really strong and um, it's caused my eye to kind of droop. So I'm really embarrassed by it, but I got to do this video. So whatever. But anyway, um, okay. So, so I was like a couple months saved and I was thinking that, um, there was a, a hawk that I thought had, what, that God was sending me a message from the hawk. Now, you know, former new agers, former witches that Jesus has saved, praise the Lord, um, are going to have this common theme, you know, and, it gets confusing a little bit um, in the beginning. Um, so, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not saying that that we weren't saved. I'm saying it takes a while to get sanctified of some of those things. And a mature Christian would not um, assume that a bird meant something. So these are um, these are asking for signs or confirmations that the Lord does give us. But, and you know, I can't. Here's the thing, maybe maybe, maybe a brand new Christian who is a former New Ager, a baby Christian, um, it's possible that the Lord could use um, that and speaking to their understanding. So I'm not debunking someone's testimony that came out fr from the New Age and that felt that the Lord gave them a, a sign about something. Um, 
gosh, I'm not debunking that at all. What I'm saying is as a mature Christian, just because you see a bird or a cat or a dog or whatever it is that you is your favorite animal that you feel drawn to, it doesn't have a spiritual significance in that way. Okay, so let me talk about what shamans believe and what witches believe because this is a, wit, a witchcraft, Wiccan, and shaman, um, like a, a shaman belief. So in the New Age, the idea is that if, if, you, if you're constantly seeing a certain type of animal it means that you uh, have a power of some sort of that animal or there's something that animal it represents in your identity. Like, oh, my paper just flew out. Oh, well. Um, so for me, it was crows. I believed that crows were somehow, they were seers. This is the belief. Okay, this is, this is not true. This is the shaman witchcraft lie or deception is that crows could see into the spirit world. And so I, I saw crows everywhere and I always thought they were so interesting and powerful. And so I started collecting crow feathers and I started thinking that I could see into the spirit world. Then I started doing tarot and I was like, yeah, the crow is my, my you know, my spirit guide. Like it's, it's, it has messages for me or I would use it. Like if I saw a crow, I thought it was confirming God's message for me. Oh, anyway, I, I think it, it, I think the devil basically, he appears as, as an angel of light. Number one, the Bible tells us that. And, and when you love animals and nature and stuff like, you know, it's just easy to deceive. It's just so easy to deceive all of us. So that's kind of what happened to me. And then, um, but it's even sneaking into the church. I've been seeing people talking about the Elijah anointing and saying that if you see crows everywhere, it means you have the Elijah anointing because crows ravens fed Elijah in the Bible. So no, no, that is a witchcraft belief. That is a pretty classic witchcraft belief uh, of assigning a spiritual meaning to seeing animals. And, you know, just because Elijah had crows feed him and the Lord had crows feed him doesn't mean that he walked around seeing crows everywhere thinking that it meant something. So do you see how it's a subtle twist of scripture it takes the scripture and then it twists it just a bit it's like a half truth and that's what the devil does those are his schemes that we have to expose okay so the other belief that's that the other belief is a Wiccan belief and the Wiccans call it familiars so they believe the same kind of thing it's the same concept um, that if you see um, an animal and, and it crosses your path frequently then that's your familiar which means that's like a spirit guide that protects you so in the new age, I very much believed that cats were my familiars, which is very common for witches. Um, I had a cat and I believe she protected me from demons. That's what, that's what, that's what we believed before Jesus saved us and showed us the truth. Jesus protects you from demons. He's the only thing that casts out demons. Demons flee from his name. They know who he is. And he's trying to get, <laughs> he's trying to get your attention through this video. I believe it. So cats are comforting because, I mean, I love cats still. And the, the devil knew that. And that's why he, you know, that's why he, that's why this stuff flourishes. This like superstitious pagan witchcraft shaman, these beliefs flourish because people love animals. Animals are like, such a gift from the Lord. They are, they're wonderful little creatures, but we don't worship the creature. But that's what witchcraft and shamanism does. It worships the created or the creature rather than the creator above in heaven. Amen. And if we turn to those four elements or those elemental spirits and we give credence to those beliefs and we believe in that and we deny that the creator, Yahweh, right? And that his son, Jesus, and God is the Trinity. If we deny that, and we say, you know what? I believe that the natural world or the creatures or the created, I believe that they have power. They don't have power. God gave them, God made them and he gave them beautiful, cute, adorable characteristics. And he may use them to comfort us if we're going through a hard time. You know, I had some childhood trauma and the Lord, I very much believe, sent me a, a cat in the form of a birthday gift. Meaning, look, give me a second here. What I mean is that God is God gives good gifts and he sent a cat for a little child who had been tormented by trauma and divorce and that cat wiped away my tears was you know and I, I loved the Lord as a kid but I'm saying I would cry at night and I would pray 
and then the cat would like wipe away my little tears and so i you know what i mean like i'm not saying that god doesn't send um, us good gifts and our pets to comfort us what i'm saying is that don't make the leap from that to believing that that cat or dog is going to spiritually protect you or spiritually give you their powers so it's really really tricky this new age stuff um it takes something that's beautiful and a gift from the Lord, like nature or animals and stuff. And I mean, like, you know, plants have um, natural qualities that the Lord gave us to, to help us um, to, you know, natural healing and things like that. But then the witchcraft, Wiccan world takes it and puts like power in the plant as if the power and the vibrations of the plant are healing us. No, the Lord created that plant for our use to help us, right? Just like food. But that doesn't mean the animal or the plant in and of itself has power. So this is kind of what the shaman Wiccan belief is. And so I just want to sound the alarm ding, 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 <laughs> without being um, over the top alarmist and just say we live in a pagan world. We have to be careful not to learn the ways of the heathen um, and, and, let, and don't let those beliefs kind of invade. Um, and certainly these personality tests, you know, they can get kind of out there. Um, and I think that um, I didn't even know that was creeping in with personality tests. So this is a really short video. And um, please feel free to give me your testimony. Any former New Ager knows what spirit animals, power animals, totem animals, spirit guides are. Um, although, side note, at the very end of this video, spirit guides are a bit different than familiars, totem animals, and spirit and animals, spirit animals. Spirit guides are... <sighs> I never see, here's the problem. I never actually believed in spirit guides. I actually didn't. When I really look back, I understood what they were. I had a friend of mine who was a Native American guy and he said his spirit guide was some, was some dude. It's basically just a person in the spirit world that you might see or contact. You might see them in a dream and you understand that they are, um, and who are they is the question. Who is this person? Is it a dead person? <laughs> no. But anyway, like it's this idea that an ancestor or some person that's in the spirit world is is giving you messages, right? Very, It's very different from spirit animals, but it's the same concept, but it's different because an animal is, it, one is an animal um, protecting you, you believe. It's like an, using an anim, animal as an amulet, which is witchcraft, to believe that an object or an animal protects you. But that's what the that's what the nature religions do, just so you know, and that's what they believe. And, you know, they are free to believe that, but the consequences of that in the Book of Romans is that you are turned over to these elemental spirits, el to this debased mind, to a, a, a way of thinking that's not from the Lord. And then when that has control over your mind, um, that's what we're praying against. That's why we witness. That's why we, and, and we are known by our love and that's why we witness. So I'm not trying to condemn anybody with those beliefs because I myself believe that and I blended it. I had, I was, I was very much into syncretism. I blended it with the God of the Bible, much like the Israelites did. So I took those beliefs and I, and I lumped them in with my belief in the God of the Bible, but I didn't know the Bible because I, I had never really read it. I, I just believed in God because I was witness to a church when I was a kid and I went to church, but then I fell away and sort of the new age says all this stuff about God and Jesus, but and angels and stuff so it has this fault false light and the devil appears as an angel of light and leads people to practice witchcraft and paganism but then call it compatible with god and so it's very deceptive but um anyways yeah i don't know i kind of got a little off track there as you know i tend to do but um i just don't i don't want to condemn you guys i i really don't what you see sometimes in me or what you notice is is this um you know witchcraft witchcraft was very traumatic for me because um the some of the spells i did with some of my um friends and stuff um it let in the demonic in such a way that it just i was you know fighting for my sanity for a couple months after jesus saved me that's the best way i know how to put it um a guy at church told me and jesus saved him from he's a former gang member jesus saved him from a lot of darkness too but he said that he, he said, you know, what I was saved from, he felt, he felt convicted was like a high level demonic principality. And that's what he said to me. Um, I don't know for sure, but it certainly felt very, very strong and just awful. 
but Jesus is always stronger and that was my sanctification. And so I don't fear that anymore because Jesus wins every time. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm sorry I get all excited because really like I was I was not in a good place you guys all this kind of spirit guide stuff Even though I wasn't super into it I already I believed that the spirit world had messages for me and even though spirit guides are different than spirit animals uh, I didn't have a specific spirit guide like I didn't believe that there was a spirit or an ancestor or something advising me but but I understood the concept and I, and I consorted with mediums and things that did have spirit guides advising them. And every time I would call uh, a psychic or psychic medium, which I was addicted to uh, really heavily, um, I, I it would turn on me. Or every time someone would try to do energy healing, it would turn on me. So, so for me, it started to just be, you know, poisonous. It was awful. And, um, but yeah, so, but anyway, I hope I've explained the difference between spirit guides and spirit animals. One is an ancestor or somebody in the spirit realm, which is honestly, they're not who they say they are, okay? For, this is for the practicing New Agers or practicing pagans. These, these spirits are not there to help you. They are there to lead you astray. They're not who they say they are. Um, and have you noticed that they always point away from the Jesus of the Bible? that's maybe that's maybe a way to kind of be asking yourself like who who are these these ancestors who are these people who who say that they're there to help me um i i just want to gently say that so um yeah but for the for the the christian and in the church let's warn the youth group about this kind of stuff because it's sneaky all right i hope this blessed your day bye guys